In the last couple of videos, we have looked at examples of how we work in linguistics. We try to figure out patterns. We take lists of words or lists of sentences and then try to figure out what are the similarities in them. We did this with Swahili words, where we tried to figure out what each of the, word, uh, the parts of the word meant by comparing them to other Swahili words. We did this in modern Greek, where we tried to figure out which words meant, which word did the sentence meant dog by comparing that sentence to other sentences in Greek. In this video, we will look at more examples of how we work in linguistics. So again, linguistics is a science and it has several core components. Phonetics, which is uh, sounds on in your mouth or on your hands. Phonology, which has to do with sounds in your brain. Morphology, which has to do with how the different parts of words are formed. And syntax, which is how we combine different words into sentences. So let's look at an example from syntax, where you'll have to solve a little syntactic mystery. These are examples of Japanese sentences. And there's a difference between Japanese and English that you'll have to figure out. Uh, we have the first sentence. Let's go through it in detail. Yuri-san wa daigaku de dare ni yaimashita ka? The first line is the Japanese uh, sentence. The second line is the gloss. Each of them tells us, tell us the meaning of the Japanese words. So they are Yuri, a name. Uh, topic means that you're talking about Yuri. So about Yuri. Um, Daigaku de means university at, at the university. Dare means who. Ni means with. Dare ni, who with. And then aimashita means met. And ka is what you put at the end of questions. So yuri-san wa daigaku de dare ni aimashita ka? Yuri at university, who with met. The third line has the meaning in English. Who did Yuri meet on campus or at the university? So again, the first line is the Japanese. The second one is the gloss. And the third one is the meaning in English. So the first sentence is a question. Yuri-san wa daigaku de dare ni aimashita ka? Who did Yuri meet on campus? The second sentence is the answer. Yuri-san wa daigaku de ana-san ni aimashita. Yuri met Anna on campus. The third one is also a question. Kino nani o tabemashita ka? What did you eat yesterday? Literally, yesterday. What? The little O marks the direct object. You can ignore it for now. Yesterday, what ate you? <laughs> what did you eat yesterday? Kino pizza o tabemashita is the answer. Yesterday, pizza ate. So, Take a look at the words in red, dare, who, uh, which corresponds to the English who, and nani, which corresponds to the English what. They are questions, and then they have answers, who, Anna, what, pizza. However, there is a difference in the behavior of the Japanese words, dare and nani, and the English words, who and what, regarding to where they show up in the sentences. What do you think the difference is? Please pause the video. The interesting difference is that in English, the question and the answer appear in different places. Who did you meet on campus? You met Anna on campus. On the other hand, in Japanese, the question and the answer appear in the same place in the sentence. Yuri at the university who met. Yuri at the university Anna met. So the who, the question, and Anna-san, the answer, are in the same position in Japanese. This is not the case in English, where who appears first in the sentence and Anna appears somewhere else in the sentence. It's the same with the second example. Kino nani o tabemashita ka? Kino pizza o tabemashita? Yesterday what? you ate? Yesterday, pizza I ate. The Japanese question appears in the same place as the answer, whereas in English, the question and the answer are in different places. So this is a difference between the syntax of Japanese and the syntax of English, and we will look at this in more detail on, I think, week five. So that's an example of a little question in syntax. We look at sentences and then we compare what their patterns are. This is an example from historical data of historical linguistics. 
there are words in Latin that started with the sound K, which uh, was written with a C. For example, centrum, certus, circulus, cuitas, calendae, carbo, carrus, colum, color, cupa, curvus. All of these have a sound like K at the beginning of the word. However, their English equivalents have different sounds in the in, at the first part of the word. Centrum becomes center with an S, center. However, calendae keeps the K sound. Calendae becomes calendar. Same as carbo becomes carbon. But certus becomes certitude. And circulus becomes circle. Take a minute to look at the words that we have. What do you think the pattern is? When do words uh, that have a Latin K sound like, uh, have the sound of an English S? Centrum to center. What kind of, uh, of words have this pattern? Please pause the video. What we would need to do is to try to look at the sounds that are next to what we're looking at. So we're looking at the first consonant of the word, the k sound in centrum or calendae. And we can see that there's a pattern. On the left, we have all of the words that have an English s sound. And all of them have the sound a or e next to the k. So in Eng so a word that has a K, in a word that has a K, that K becomes an S if the following sound is an A or an E. So what we need to do is look at the sounds that are next to the one we're looking at. Because that A and that E in centrum and circulus might be influencing the K and making it become an S, like in center. On the right column, because those K sounds are not followed by an A or an E, they did not change. And so they kept uh, their K sound. That's in calendae, calendar, curvus, curve. So again, look at what we did. We looked at a sound and then we tried to figure out what uh, the neighboring sounds were and how they might be influencing my own sound, how they might be influencing how I change over time. And we're gonna be seeing this a lot. One final tiny exercise, and this is just a quick question. Take a look at those words and try to pronounce them yourself. Do they sound the same or do they sound different? Please pause the video. <laughs> Turns out where you're from in the US might help predict how you pronounce those two. I'm a foreign learner, so I learned them the same. To me, they're caught and caught. However, some people pronounce them caught and caught uh, with a different vowel, the ones that grew up in the red area here. So as you can see, your geographical location has numerous influences on how you speak a language like standard American English. Just a quick roundup, these have been meant to be examples of how we study language. We use data so that we can look at patterns and then we can try to construct models of how language works. For example, we did this by comparing words in Swahili until we figured out what Nina Soma meant. We tried to think of sprock and tried to see if it resembled other English words or not. It doesn't. We looked at uh, sentences in modern Greek to figure out what the parts of skilon are. And number four, we looked at questions and answers in Japanese and figured out that the question words and answer words in Japanese are at the same place, whereas in English, they're not. And number five, a Latin and English example, we figured out that a sound is affected by the sounds next to it. The K next to an I or an E changed to an S. On number six, we figured out from intuition, try to figure out what our accent is, and then figure out how that meshed into a dialectal map of the US. In summary, we use data to make models and describe the patterns that we see in human languages.